The other feeling is a sense of responsibility. The first four feelings are beautiful and warm. When you pray well, you feel safe. When you pray well, you feel loved. When you pray well, you feel like a child. When you pray well, you feel you are different and special. And when you pray well and leave prayer, you will have a sense of responsibility. Why? Because without even thinking about it, you are forced to be like him. You have to preserve his reputation. You now belong to him, so you are responsible for his dignity as your father. The responsibility is not in saying do and don't. It is a child's responsibility. When one is well raised, he, as the son, must take into account the dignity of his father. The responsibility here stems from respecting the father and not bringing harm to him. No matter what happens, no one can make a mistake toward him because of me. So you want to do the right thing for him. So you come out of prayer with an urgent motive to become a saint. Not so people can clap for you in the end, but for him. Sainthood is an inner desire for everyone who has tasted the bosom of a father, not for the sake of having one's picture or icon hung in a church, but for the sake of making his father happy, for the sake of honoring his father. Sainthood is a natural result of praying correctly. If you pray correctly, you will find that you want to be a saint, not for the sake of rivalry with others, not for the sake of people knowing you. There are many saints who we have not even heard of, heard about, and martyrs too. You will do it for your father. At the beginning of the life of our Lord Jesus on earth, he said something beautiful to the Virgin Mary and Joseph the carpenter when he went to the temple and left them for a few days. They blamed him, so he said to them, Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Jesus Christ is the one who completely absorbed the feeling of fatherhood because he is the only begotten son. Therefore, he gives us fatherhood through Christ, so we have become children of God. So he said, all I think about is how to be about my father's business. The person who prays well and says the Our Father who art in heaven prayer from his heart thinks all the time about how to be like his father, how to deal with others to be like him, what he should say or do to be like him, etc. There is no there is nothing else on his mind. Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Matthew 5.48 Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5.16 So when you hear someone glorify God or is living to glorify God, this is not selfishness from God, but rather a natural response from a person who has tasted his Father's bosom. So all that occupies him is to glorify his father and make him happy. Let me summarize. Prayer is a place of safety, love, spiritual childhood, distinction, and responsibility. All of this is present in prayer without realizing it, and it doesn't matter what exactly you say in prayer. You will feel them, that is, safety, love, spiritual childhood, distinction, and responsibility, just because you prayed correctly and because you sit with your father and meet your God. I will quickly explain the difference between parentage and adoption. There are people who ask about the difference between Christ being the Son of God and us as children of God. There is a big difference. Christ is a son by nature, like your son is by the body. You may be a teacher in a school and say all the students in the class are your children, but there is one child who is really your son, and it's the one who is from your body. He is the most precious one. Do you get the, the distinction? You are really the father of this person, but the rest, to some extent, honorably and psychologically, are adopted. We are God's adopted children, but when we follow Christ the Son, we receive all his powers as a son. I say it again. The only person who has the right to say to God, My Father is Christ. However, when, when he incarnated and became one of us, he took what was ours and gave us what was his. That's a quote from St. Athanasius. 
He took what we had when he became a human like us. And this is something dishonorable as he became the son of man and all of us are children of Adam. This is not good after what humans did. And when he gave us what he had, we also became children of God. So he loses along the line and we are the winners along the line. Therefore, as much as you follow Christ when praying, as much as you enjoy all your characteristics as a son, for example, the privileges that let Daniel stand among the lions and the lions could not harm him, these are all the privileges of the children of God. What made the fiery furnace unable to harm the three boys? The privileges of the children of God. What makes a person able to do miracles? The privileges of the children of God. What gives a person peace above all other minds? The privileges of the children of God. How can we receive all these privileges? They are deposited into your account, but you do not withdraw them because you are not close to the only begotten Son. You don't take from him. When Jesus rose from the dead, he said to Mary Magdalene, Go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father. This is very private and very personal. Then after he said, I am ascending to my Father, he said, And your Father, meaning you two are his sons. But why did Jesus not shorten this sentence and say, Our Father? He tried to remind us of the difference. Now he is your Father too, so take what you want. Our Lord Jesus always used to say, my daddy. And this brings us to the real meaning and idea of my father. So when a person enters into a very difficult tribulation, like Christ did the night of Gethsemane, what consoles him the most is when he can say these two words, my daddy. That is, if the person had reached the same meaning of these two words that Christ had intended, this will comfort him even if he carries all the worries of the world over his head, they, that is the worries, will be small. And hours later, with the same sense of this word, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do.